On homework 2.1c, uh, there are a bunch of questions asked a bunch of different ways. And what I'm going to do on this homework is rather than go through problems with you, I'm going to go over what you should be looking for on each problem and what you should recognize. If you were not able to recognize this self, you, you should have made sure you tried this on your own first um, before you watched this video. And if there were ones you still couldn't get, this video is there to help you. But if you needed to get help from this video, you don't understand the vocabulary well enough to be able to get things right on your test. So, let's look at these different problems and see what you should be able to see. On number one, it says, determine the slope of this curve at x equals 5. Determining the slope of the tangent line to a function means finding the derivative. So we're going to need to find the derivative and plug in x equals 5. Um, this means evaluate the derivative at x equals 5. So you're going to find the derivative, plug in x equals 5. What you should notice is to find the derivative, this is a chain rule. There is a function inside of a function. The outside function, you should recognize as square root of x. The function that's inside of square root of x is x squared plus 9. And so x squared plus 9 is inside of square root of x. You need to use the chain rule. The next one. Find the instantaneous rate of change. Um, this is a way of saying to find the derivative. The derivative tells you the instantaneous rate of change. These are some words you want to be able to recognize what it's asking you to do. And it wants you to find it at x equals pi over 4. So again, you're going to be finding the derivative and plugging in pi over 4 into your answer. Um, when you go to do this derivative, you should see it's sine squared of x. Well, we don't know. Sine squared of x isn't a memorized der derivative of we ha of, that we have, but this is a function within a function that we know how to do. Sine of x is being squared. And so the outside function is x squared. And what's inside that is being squared is sine of x. So we're going to need to use the chain rule here. This is something squared. Um, and so we're going to need to use the chain rule. Number three. What we should notice is it's asking us, is this function continuous at x equals 2. You've got to reach kind of far back to find out if something is continuous. Remember, the definition of continuous involves limits. For something to be continuous at a point, the limit as x approaches that value from the left uh, has to equal f of that value, which also needs to equal the limit as you come from the right. Um, so the limit from the left and the limit from the right need to equal the function value. So here we have a function. You're going to need to do a limit. Now, um, you need to reach back and do some of your limit evaluating skills to be able to get this right. Hopefully it goes well for you. Um, okay. Number four. It asks you to do dy dx. dy dx is another way of saying to find the derivative. When you do the derivative, you should notice that not only do we have a chain rule, we have two chains. The reason is the very inside function is 3x. 3x is inside of 3x is inside of cosine, but the very outer function is x squared. Cosine is being squared. That's inside of x squared. But 3x is inside of cosine. So you're going to need to do uh, the chain rule. But when you do the chain rule on the outside function, it's going to be uh, f prime of g of x times g prime of x. But remember that when you do the derivative of the inside function, the function that's inside of x squared, that function has another f function inside of it. So you'll need to do another chain rule. Okay. This one asks you to do dy dx at x equals 1. So, dy dx means you do the derivative. We should recognize that this is a quotient, a function divided by another function. Um, and so you'll need to do the quotient rule. Um, and it says at x equals 1. So once you do the quotient rule, you're plugging in x equals 1. Here, it asks you for the fourth derivative. So, you're going to find the first derivative. And when you find the first derivative, you notice there's a function inside of another function. So you'll need to do the chain rule. The outside function is x to the fourth. The function that's inside of it is 2x plus 1. And so you'll do the derivative of the outside with the inside still in it. So it'll be 4 times 2x plus 1 cubed. This is 4x cubed with 2x plus 1 inside of it. Um, times the derivative of the inside function, which is 2. 
You can simplify this, and then you'll need to find the second derivative. When you find the second derivative, now there's a constant multiple with a chain rule, and you should be able to find the derivative of that. You'll need to find the third derivative and the fourth derivative. Hopefully that goes well. Um, the next one. It's asking you at x equals 1 to find f prime of 1. f of x is this function. It's asking you to find the derivative. I strongly recommend for absolute value functions that you just graph it. You're going to graph this function. Hopefully you know it from Algebra 2. You can graph this is a shift to the right and a shift up from the parent function. And then it's asking you to find f prime of 1. Well, on a graph, that just means what is the slope at x equals 1. So you should be able to make a graph and identify that. On number 8, 3x minus 4y is tangent to this curve. And it asks you what k is. Oh my goodness. Well, the first thing you should recognize is what's the connection between a tangent line and a function. One thing they have is that the slope of the tangent line is the derivative of the function. The derivative of the function tells you the slope of the tangent line. The other thing that has to be true is that at the point where the slope uh, that, that the point is that the derivative is the slope of the tangent line, the two functions share a point. So when you find the slope of the tangent line, um, you'll also probably need that they share a point somewhere. So number nine, uh, I think number eight was one of the harder ones. Number nine, it says which curve, which the following is an equation that intersects at right angles. This means it's perpendicular to all of the, every curve in this family. So we want to find a curve that is perpendicular to this. And so what we need is we need the slope of the tangent line, the negative reciprocal of that, to always be the slope, um, the slope of this function. An equation of a tangent line is this, and it wants you to find it at the point 1, negative 1. So to find the equation of a tangent line, you're going to need to find the slope. You need a point. It already gives you a point. All you need to do is find the slope. To find the slope of the tangent line, you need to find a derivative. The derivative tells you the slope of the tangent line. You'll just need to plug in x to find what the slope is there. It says, determine the slope of the tangent line at the point where y prime prime equals 0. Well, determine the slope of the tangent line is asking you to find what is y prime. But you're evaluating at the x value where the second derivative is 0. So you'll first need to find what is the second derivative. So you'll have to take the derivative, take the derivative again, and find what is the x value that makes the second derivative equal to 0. So you'll find the second derivative, see what x value makes it equal to 0, and plug that into the first derivative. Because the slope of the tangent line is the first derivative, and they want it at the point where y prime prime equals 0. The last one. This is something that you've got to recognize. This is the limit definition of the derivative. Um, and the function is, 8 times 1 half plus x to the 8th power. Um, is that right? I don't even know. Is that even right? Hmm. Actually, I'm doubting myself now for just a second here. Um, this would be, as h goes to 0, this would be 0 over 0, so that's good. Um, this is the, f if this is f of x plus h, ooh, no, no, no. f of x plus h minus f of x. Oh, you know what this is? This is not the um, limit definition that we usually use with h. This is um, f of x plus h minus f of 0. So this is f of x, uh, this is f of x minus f of 0 over x minus 0, this is the derivative evaluated at a point.
So what we're going to need to do is find the derivative of this and then plug in h equals 0. Um, so it looks a lot like the h one, but in reality, because this isn't f of x, um, this is really f of x minus f of c over x minus c. Um, it's just that the x's are replaced by h's. Um, so this was a trickily disguised c1. Um, so you're going to be finding the derivative of this function. You're finding the derivative of f of x and plugging in h equals 0 into that function. Obviously, to find the derivative of f of x, you'll need to use the chain rule. Hope this helps.